AutoCAD has many tools available to ensure that you draw as precisely as you can. Now, the amount of accuracy available in AutoCAD is amazing. One of the most common and most important features, though, that you use to draw accurately are the O snaps, the object snap. That's what it's short for. And there are many ways to gain access to them. And we've done this throughout the video so far, and I've even gone over this briefly for you. So we've discussed O snaps several times already, but now I want to take a good look at them and maybe look a bit more closely as well about their tracking features that are available. Let's open up an example file so we have something to work with. Go to the files for this chapter and let's open up the blocks and tables imperial drawing file. This is a great file to look at O snaps because there are a lot of different object types in here that we can snap to. O snaps make sure you place your objects in a very specific place on a specific object. Now you can enter in an O snap by typing in an alias on the command line, or you can access them through a shortcut menu, or you can utilize what's called running O snaps. Running O snaps keep the O snaps on all of the time. So if we draw a line, my running O snaps are on. I can tell because I can press the F3 button to toggle them off and on and it will tell you in the command line, plus the O snaps button right here will turn on and it will be blue, and that will tell me that my running O snaps are on. Now if my running O snaps on, I can automatically snap to an object. I'll get a little glyph, that little green glyph shows up, and it even tells me end point. That's what that one means. That means when I left click now, that my line is going to start from the end point that I selected. I'm going to turn off my ortho so that you can see. It's right there. Now I can draw this line to the endpoint of this line with my running O snaps. And this line is exactly at that corner and that corner. I did that with my running O snaps. Now running O snaps may be kind of difficult to understand at first. Just assume that they're always on. They're ready. They're looking for that specific type of snapping ability to come into place. And when they are, they jump right in and they say, hey, look, if you click here now, you're going to snap to this type of location. So they're always running. Now I can draw a line and I can snap to the midpoint of that line because I have my running O snaps on. Or I can type in MID, press enter, and that will lock me into the midpoint O snap. Now when you do that, that's an O snap override. I won't be able to snap to anything except the midpoint of an object. As you can see, my little glyph is popping up on all of these objects, and it's always in the middle. That's how O snaps work. So if I draw a line again, if I right click and hold, this will pop up my shortcut window. This gives me a lot of different options, but the really cool thing is that it gives me snap overrides. I can get to all of my O snaps right here. So I can get to my endpoint, midpoint, intersection, I can get to all of them. So if I pick endpoint, this works the exact same way as if I typed it in myself. So if you don't know what the keystrokes are for those specific types of O snaps, you can get to them that way, and it's pretty quick and easy to do. As you can see here, I can't get to that midpoint, but I can get to the endpoint of that line or this line. I'm locked into snapping to the end of some sort of object. So that's essentially how O snaps work, and those are the main three ways how to get to them. Now you toggle them off and on by pressing the F3 key or by clicking on the status bar down here. If I click on this little arrow, this will turn on my list of running O snaps. Everything that has a check mark on it will be used. This is my typical setup. I usually keep all of them turned on except for the nearest and the parallel. Now we went over the different O snaps and what they do in a previous session. So I'm not going to do that so much again anymore. I will briefly go through them though. If I click on the Object Snap Settings button, this brings up my Drafting Settings window. Make sure you go to the Object Snap tab. Here I can clear all these off very quickly and only turn on one or two. Now a lot of CAD users will only turn on a few of these O snaps and that's perfectly fine. There's no right or wrong way to use your running O snaps, but it is a great idea to actually use them to some degree. So it's possible that you don't ever work with circles or ellipses, and you don't ever need to snap to those. So you can turn the quadrant off in case you don't want it. This is my typical setting. Now an endpoint will snap to an endpoint, and you have an ability to snap to the midpoint, the center of a circle, arc, or ellipse, 
the node goes to a node object, which is usually for a definition or a point. Quadrant goes to essentially the four compass points of a circle or arc. The intersection will go to where two lines intersect. I do want to go over an extension so I can kind of show you what that looks like. So I'm going to draw a line. Let's say I want to draw a line, but it's somewhere out here that is an extension of this line. So with my running O snaps on, I can come to the end, I can just kind of slowly drag it out. And it automatically picks up on that line, and it sees that I'm right here, and I can go to it. So that point, the start of this line, is on that line. So that's pretty cool. Now let's look at getting to your drafting settings window here. Type in OS on the keyboard, press enter, and you can get to your object snap tab. If you press your F11 key, that will turn on your object snap tracking, or I can turn it off. What is object snap tracking? Well, it's kind of like this extension and the intersection O snaps all built into one. And it's really cool. So let's say I want to draw a circle and I want it to start where this line and this line intersect. I can either extend these lines out and find that center point, or I can just use my snap tracking. So what I want to do is I go on this line first. I'm going to see my extension here. When I do that, you see that little green plus sign at the end of that line? That's good. You want to see that. That means the snap tracking has picked up on that line. So now I come to this line, and I do that extension thing the same way. When I drag up, I come here. I just kind of drag it and eyeball it until it gets there, and AutoCAD sees that tracking line. For both lines, I click, and there's my circle. Now to prove to you that the center of this circle is actually at the intersection, we do a fillet, radius, zero, pick this line, pick that line, and there you go. So that's a really cool tool to use with your object snap tracking because it allows you to place objects where there are no objects. And it eliminates the need for construction lines, extension lines, trimming lines, filleting like this, to go back to that line, I would have to trim these again, and there's a lot more work available to you. Now, by doing it this way, with that object snap tracking, you eliminate work, you get done more quickly, and that's the point to CAD. Now, there's another tracking feature. It's called polar tracking. This feature allows you to snap to specific angles when drawing. Now, you turn that on by pressing F10, or you come down here to your status bar, and you can click this on or off. This is really cool. So when I draw a line, see I'm snapping here. My ortho isn't on, but my polar tracking is turned on, so it's snapping me to my angle of zero or my angle 90. I can kind of use my ortho without having my ortho on. Now let's look at some of the settings for that. If I click this button right here, the little arrow, I can have it set to just 90. I can go to 45, or I can go to every 30. Etc. So here I am. I'm going to draw a line again. So I'm snapping to zero, snapping to 30, snapping to 60, 90, and so on. Every 30 degrees, it snaps in. Now, this is great for when you want to draw like an orthogonal type drawing or make something that you need to draw at specific angles on. Now, if I go to the tracking settings, again, this is in the drafting settings, you can go to polar tracking. I can get to all of those options right here. I can go as far as even every five degrees. Now, if these degrees aren't enough and I need something specific, I click on the additional angle, click on the new, and I can tell it something strange like 23 degrees. I'm going to switch this back to 90, click OK. Now, when I draw my line, polar snaps right into every 90 and then into 23. Now, that's not every 23 angles, it's specifically at 23 degrees. So if I want to go every 23 degrees, I have to add that into as an additional angle in that list. So as you can see, there are a lot of different ways to snap your line work into place, automatically lock it in and be able to draw with a great amount of accuracy.